Shalom, welcome to The Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabad House of Delmar, together with my co-host, Mark Rodejov, statewide news service, jpstechvilly.com, as you can see here, now columnist for the Jewish Press. Right, Rabbi, and I'm having a lot of fun with all three assignments, and my column in the Jewish Press is called Albany Beat, and I talk about how government relates to the Jewish community, or doesn't, as the case yeah. may be. But someone who does relate well with the Jewish community is our guest today. It's Paul Bergdorf. He's a... Uh, Albany County legislator from Colony, Latham Loudonville area. And welcome to the Jewish View. It's great to see you again. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Rabbi, for having me. I'm pleased to be here. You know, we've known each other for over 20 years. So yes, I, uh, as I get older, I say that to more and more people. people that's <laughs> right. Well, consider the alternative. It's it a good thing. It is a good thing. <laughs> so, uh, uh, you know, you're re newly elected to the county legislature. Are you living the dream? Is this really what you well, thought it would this be? Well, this is really, I, I tell people, uh, I had the privilege of having a 36-year career in state government. Yes, dormitory. Uh, well, the, the Senate for 19 years right. as the chief of staff, and then in the administration, and then at the dormitory authority. Who were you chief of staff for? Uh, Senator John Dunn, who was the deputy majority leader. He's now at White in Manhattan. Manhattan. And he was the deputy attorney general of the United States under... Uh, Dick Thornburg and the first George Bush. Right. Uh, so I, I I was trained by by one of the best mm -hmm. and a man of great character and distinction. Yes. And uh, so I, I, I spent 19 years in the Senate, and while I was in the Senate, I got involved in electoral politics. Probably my uh, my earliest foray was in 1983. I ran against Jim Coyne for county executive at the ripe old age of 25. And you took that as your first shot. That was the only <laughs> election I've ever lost. <laughs> so uh, that was a, a learning experience, as we almost have. Uh, but then I uh, went to the Colony Town Board, where I served uh, four terms, 16 years. And I also served as the deputy supervisor at mm -hmm. the end before I uh, under stepped Mary down. Brazil. Under Mary Brazel. I stepped down in 2002. And... Um, I was with the dormitory authority for many of those years, and then mm -hmm. I, you know, was uh, a senior director of the dormitory authority mm -hmm. until I retired in 2010. And you were smart enough never to hire me with John, for John Dunn's office or the dormitory authority. <laughs> well, so, anyway, we had a, <laughs> your we had, loss. We had, a, <laughs> we had a lot of good people pass through our portals. <laughs> but uh, you also got a, a political science degree, business law. Uh, from SUNY Albany, University of Albany. Yes, I did. You went, to the four, you went there the four years before I started. I, I started in 74, yeah. graduated in 78, uh, met my bride there. Uh, we Jane. got married, Jane, and, uh, and the rest sort of is history. And, did, uh, yeah. did you ever get involved with WSUA on the campus? Radio no, station? no, no, no. I was uh, actually when I, when I uh, my, my big affiliation on the campus was I was one of the only student chefs on campus. Uh -huh. uh, I had uh, worked a number of summers as actually a chef in an Italian restaurant in the mm -hmm. Adirondacks, and I uh, had an opportunity to meet the chef who ran one of the quads, Colonial Quad, and he and I kind of uh, connected, mm -hmm. and uh, and I and I spent uh, my four years as a as the only student chef on and campus. And now you're still cooking. And now I'm still cooking. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So uh, so has this been the dream? Right. Actually, actually, it has been because uh, I have had an experience uh, in in both legislative and the uh, executive side of municipal government uh, from um, being a yeah. town but board in member. Of, in terms of w the way the county legislature operates, you're one of ten Repu one of you know ten Republicans. Uh, are you is and by the way, congratulations on being named deputy Republican leader. Thank you. I don't want to say minority leader, but that's okay. Uh, okay. That's where we are. We're <laughs> the minority. But I wanted to, you know, say that uh, you had, you know, the way this county legislature is set up and the way the dynamics are. Is this really what you thought it would be internally? I mean that you ran for office and now you have your bills, you have your thoughts, you have your wants. Yes, yes. And, and, and uh, one of the things I've found is, uh, I don't know if this is a new environment in the county le legislature, but there is uh, more collegiality and uh, bipartisanship than there has been in the past. Give me an example. Um, well, some of, it, some of it still has a little tension. But uh, the fact that we have a reapportionment bill out there, uh, independent redistricting, 
and the fact that we have 19 sponsors, yeah. uh, 13 Democrats, six Republicans, and one conservative right. who can put their names on one piece of legislation, yeah. we're one vote short, we're right. working yeah, on that. Say, yeah. But the fact that there are 19 right. folks that are interested in doing some real reform in Albany County, that's uh, that's somewhat revolutionary. But why couldn't the extra one or two votes come from the Republican side? Well, you're we, the deputy we leader would, now. We would hope we would hope that maybe ultimately that would happen, but uh, uh, dynamics being what they are, it does it doesn't it's not you know, that you way gotta today. You got to do this a little bit, you know, well, the you twisting be, arm. And you, <laughs> just for the civics for our listeners and viewers, that the 39, I mean, we has not been 39 said, county 38 legislators. county legislators, so obviously 20, right. simple math, is a majority. Right. That's what you were the, referring to. And, so and the, and the makeup is... Uh, uh, 29 Dems. Tw and there are two, actually well, two conservatives. There are two conservatives, but uh, they two caucus conservatives, with the nine, one, No, one, in, one caucus is with the Dems. Who's that? Uh, Chris Smith from the Hilltowns. Really? He, he is a, uh, he owns the Maple Inn. Chris is a great young man who's built a phenomenal business out in the Hill Towns. Uh, he's a conservative who caucuses with the, uh, with who the Democrats. Who did he defeat? Because he's a freshman also. That uh, wasn't Deborah Bush's seat, was it? I'm, I'm, I'm not, okay. I'm not sure. Okay. I, it, I, it may be. Yeah? Yeah. Because she was the arch conservative. Yeah. Over, yeah, okay. Well, I was just wondering. Uh, they had a lot of change in the Hill Towns. In yeah. the past couple of elections, you know, they, and that's unusual because they've been, you know, people who get elected in the hill towns can stay for pretty much as long as they want. You know, it's a, it's a, <laughs> it's an uh, encumbency a very, program. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very unique group of folks up yeah. there who have a real um, uh, cohesiveness of interest. Yeah, and uh, you know, I, I've seen it in some of the statewide elections where you know communities that were formerly a uh, very strong Democratic lean, went for Senator Amador because mm -hmm. of some of the positions that he had taken that were beneficial well, to the Hill Downs. Well, the, the Democratic County Sheriff endorsing him also. Well, even, even before that, well, uh, two years ago, um, George is a, uh, is a Second Amendment guy. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, right, Second Amendment rights in the Hill Towns Every other house had a yellow Sportsman for Amador sign in mm -hmm, front of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, regardless of party affiliation, there's nothing more valuable to, a, uh, to an elected official than crossover voters and uh, people who really feel a kinship with you and, and vote for you regardless of party. So that's what the Republicans need to do in the Hill Towns in order to get more, hill, more Republicans elected. Because the Republicans, you'd think, would be the Second Amendment, pro-Second Amendment people. And they are. Naturally. And they are. And, but, you know, the candidates have never been Republican out in the hill towns, no matter how much we've tried. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, what's the uh, big issue? What committees are you on in the county legislature? Uh, I am on uh, the Public Works Committee, and that's very important for me because uh, traffic and development in Colony are probably... Uh, the most important issues that my communities face. Yeah. I have Loudonville and Latham. Central yeah. Latham and Loudonville, uh, bordered by Shaker Road, Maxwell Road, Old Niskayuna Road, Route 9, 155, Osborne and Osborne. That's really the square of people that I have. And then I have uh, my district is a, uh, a poster child uh, for a gerrymandered district. Uh, because they uh, took my district down the yellow line on Wolf Road and then uh, built in two election districts in uh, uh, the village of Colony. That was for my predecessor who uh, has... Who was that? Uh, uh, Rich Jacobson, who passed away. Oh. He lived in uh, an apartment complex in the, in the village of Colony, and uh, the, the district uh, is uh, odd in shape, pr primarily yeah. for was because for him as that. a beneficiary. Yeah. Well, he was the chair of the Colony Democratic, Democratic Committee. Committee. And, and lo so and behold, he ran unopposed. Until he Until I ran. Came along, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so. Now you're, so you ran against him? Well, no, no. We, we interviewed together for various things, and then he decided not to run. Uh -huh. And uh, he, he sort of uh, uh, d made a l very, very late decision, and then they, uh, they ran a Democratic district leader against me. And who was that? Uh, ben Seiden. 
Oh, Ben Sa- I saw his signs up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We had a sign war in Colony. Uh, yeah. It was. And was he Jewish? I don't. I, you know, mm. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. S Y D E N. He yeah. spelled it, yeah. but I wasn't sure. I thought he was. But mm-hmm. are you? Uh, so you defeated him decisively because yes, he was I, not well known. He was a. Well, I, I had an advantage. If first of all, I'd run five times in Colony. Right. Oh yeah. You're and, a well known uh, name. Out there. Yeah. And if you, if I had to draw my own district. I would take the area where my uh, three children went to school around Southgate School and uh, the area where we knew everyone involved in youth sports and we were involved with Colony Senior Citizens and my wife is very much involved with Mohawk Hudson Humane Society. So it's really, you know, I I had been used to campaigning uh, townwide, which is 24,000 homes and 80,000 people. So and you, 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 get a, was you get a you smattering yeah. of people, but when, you, but when you go out door-to-door in your own neighborhood, 2,800 people, you realize you know somebody in every third house if you've been there for 34 years. Mm-hmm. So it, it was, uh, I, I had and a tremendous amount love. of fun. Paul, you feel the love, do Well, you? Uh, I felt the love and I lost 60 pounds going door-to-door, <laughs> yeah. uh, 58 of which I put back on. Oh, okay. but, uh, <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> You got to can. That's a reason to campaign every two years, not four. Well, I promise people. <laughs> I promise people. I'd go door to door every year. So I'm going. I'm gonna. Okay. I'm gonna keep that up. It's kind of like Schumer going every county every year. Yeah. So you go door to door every year. Okay. Uh, as uh, Bob Prentice would say, you know, get a good pair of shoes and several of them. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There so you go. Uh, it's a shoe leather campaign all the time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so w- what's new about campaigning? in today's world than it was, let's say, in your first few elections? Because uh, um, computerization and social emails, me- social, social media, media. Yeah. Social media. I, uh, well, your Facebook page is woefully lacking. Me? Your Facebook page is woefully uh, lacking. I know. And, uh, you don't I'm, even have a, a about, the about page is nothing really about you, so I'm here to help. Yeah, I, I realize <laughs> I, I, I was a... Uh, um, a late convert to Facebook, okay. and I was I was afraid that if I got into Facebook, I'd be I'd be on the computer ten hours a day, mm-hmm. and uh, I have found that I'm spending more and more time, which is which is difficult. Uh, and I also uh, had spoke spoken to the folks at the Times Union. I had the opportunity to write a blog. Yeah. So now I'm doing a blog for the Times Union on Albany County, Colony, and, and broader issues. Well, one of the uh, f- your fellow common count- county legislator members, uh, Sam Fine, uh, during the public comment session, he tw- he uh, uh, posts on Facebook. This is I'm at the county legislature meeting. Uh, and takes a picture of it and sends it out and. You know, while they're, he's supposed to be listening to public comment, but he's dealing with Facebook to tell his people where he's well, at. Well, uh, we had a piece of legislation. Mark Grimm uh, is extremely uh, active in social media and communications. It's his business. That's right. He's a speech and communications coach. Yep. And he had a bill earlier this year uh, asking the clerk to assign every legislative uh, session and each legislative bill a hashtag name yeah. so that people could comment and we could have real-time feedback uh-huh. um, on, uh, on issues electronically. And I think... Uh, uh, 19 people supported it, but you didn't get it. <laughs> you get my drift. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're, 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 you know, but progress is incremental. If anybody would have, would have, would have told me that I'd be spending time on Facebook two years ago, I'd have... Uh, I'd have told them that probably would not have been the case. So we all we all get there eventually. Well, I will tell I will tell you a famous story that you will appreciate, because everyone on the from every so often on this program, I do confess that I was two and a half years the executive director of the Albany County Republican Committee, and under three chairmen: George Scaringe, Fred Field, and <clears throat> Peter Kamani, uh, and he. Um, but you know, when I first started there, they were still using DOS computers where you had to you know, actually go in and do the coding yourself. And I brought in Windows into the, uh, in, into the county committee and you saw how the attendance went up at all our events. Mm-hmm. And uh, George was like, well, where are you getting all these people from? Like, I never was able to 
<laughs> you know, are, are they all paying? <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and I said, yeah, we got the money in. So he would, uh, so we were doing well. But you know, Lauren Ayers ran for Congress, and she uh, against Mike McNulty, and she would send me emails and she'd send me uh, attachments with uh, co committee. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, position papers. So she'd come in yelling at me, like, why aren't you answering my emails? And I said, well, how do I know that I got your email? <laughs> Is there a, a, a bell that goes off? Is there some way that someone could tell me that I got your email? You just have to check. I said, but I'm busy doing all these other things. How do I know that I, you know, call me, tell me I should check my email, do something. Yeah. <laughs> It's just, it was well, so funny, it was, it was so sad, it was funny. And you know, now I'm so hooked with my phone and I have you know, seven email addresses and I segment my life that way and I have, <laughs> that it's just hilarious how much we have uh, How we've acclimated to electronic acclimated, society. You know, but th that really helped, at least with fundraising and with getting people attuned to what the county committee was doing. That was something that computers you know, really helped Talking with. about Albany County, the budget is doing well. That's what they say. We, we, pa they kind of we passed the budget last night. Um, the county executive sent us a, uh, a zero tax increase budget. Uh, it's the fourth year in a row uh, where there was a zero tax increase budget. The uh, fund balance is now approaching $58 million. We have a $670 million budget, plus mm -hmm. or minus a few million. Mm -hmm. uh, and the state controller recommends that you have up to 10% available as a fund balance for a rainy day. So the fund balance has gone from 17 up to, to $58 million. Mm -hmm. So we're probably to able to withstand uh, some sort of a downturn or... Where do you think the money's coming from? Well, well nursing increase. home for one, right? Well, the saving... Uh, not costing the nursing home. Well, the right. nursing home used to used to bleed uh, right. about twelve million dollars a year, and it's now down to four and a half. Right. And Larry Slatke, the uh, nursing home administrator, is doing a tremendous job. He so has, that's eight uh, million there. He has mm -hmm. brought in really private sector uh, efficiencies mm -hmm. and management. We're now able to uh, uh, to to properly code all our uh, expenditures and get properly reimbursed. Uh, they've kind of reconfigured staffing and, and work rules to maintain uh, tremendous services, but to do it within, you know, sort of uh, best practices. So you've got that. Uh, we still have a, uh, uh, a subtly rising sales tax. Um, you know, I come from a community where we have Latham Farms and Colony Center and Wolf Road and Corporate Woods. Um, Route 9, yeah, just Route in general, 9. yeah. But I mean, uh, you know, in Colony, we, we have the benefit of having both a strong residential tax base and an even stronger commercial mm -hmm, tax base. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, homeowners really are not bearing the full brunt of, mm -hmm. of, of the real property tax. But the, the other thing that happens, and most people don't realize it, is that even if you don't increase the tax levy, there is growth in the real property tax base that's usually between one and a half and two percent per year. That's from additions to the commercial community, new residential units going on, so the tax base is growing. So you can withstand probably the first one and a half to two percent uh, growth in expenditures without having a tax increase. Yeah. So that's, uh, you know, we've, that's the importance of economic development and mm -hmm. having a vibrant community. And, the, uh, and he also created the county recreation department, yes. which was relatively first year, first budget that that was in. Yes. So that was, uh, so he's expanding programs at the same time. Now we all hear that on the county level, Medicaid is the biggest cost. It is the biggest driver. I'm, I sit on the social services committee and there is not a meeting that goes by where we don't uh, authorize uh, 15 or 20 different social service providers. Uh, we, have, uh, we have a very strong safety net in Albany County. Um, we, there are tremendous state mandates 
and in some instances the county has gone gone above the state mandate for certain programs but most of the money passes through from uh, mm -hmm. the state and the federal government but it's a but it's a huge driver of mm -hmm. the of the county so budget so has has the county commitment to social services because you say the state and federal money goes passes through has the county We've money we gone we, up or down. I think I think we're we're still in a in a growth, uh, slight growth uh, pattern. Uh, the uh, the expenditures with social services. Uh, with social yeah. services. Uh, we met with Mike Connors last night, uh, our caucus. Uh, Mike has asked to uh, add a position in his office to do uh, an efficiency study uh -huh. uh, for the social service programs to see if there isn't some uh, mechanism where we can really more wisely spend our, uh, our social services budget holistically okay. uh -huh. uh, and take a look at outcomes. Because really, um, if you're spending the same 10 million every year on a particular program and nobody's coming out of poverty and people are uh, continuing to rely mm -hmm. on it, you've really got to try to help people other than those who are really the long-term social service uh, need or yeah. needs folks uh, to, to come out of it. And yet, up until, it was only up until November that you approved a social services commissioner for the county. And how many months were we not with a Well, we had, we had the acting commissioner who was a deputy, and she assumed the, uh, uh, Commissioner McClave, McClave assumed, yeah. uh, assumed the, uh, mm -hmm. the responsibilities of commissioner. Right, so it wasn't so there was leaderless. A but no, it was no, not by any amount, not by any okay. imagination. So, but the perception was that, you know, there was no, there was no name on the door, so to speak. Well, that's, yeah. uh, that's up to the county executive. Yeah. I, I'm sure he has his... Uh, but you uh, are selection worried. and vetting you process. Have, as a member of the Social Services Committee, have you ever gone into the Social Services Department and sat on those in those chairs and seen and filled out the forms and seen the process? For I the haven't. Loan? I haven't filled out the forms, but I uh, did take a tour. I've been. To, I've been to almost every county department that it is that there is, and uh, I will tell you that in social services. Uh, they have tried to institute inf efficiencies. Um, clients need to submit uh, information. They need to photostat it, scan it, send it to their That's case manager. That's an old manager. word, photostat. That's an old word. <laughs> uh, but, but all of a sudden now, they have kiosks yes. in the social service department where instead of coming in and using a staff member's time to, uh, uh, to do the, right. the mundane and clerical tasks, it, it's almost like the self-service checkout at, at, uh, at Price Chopper, where you kind of serve yourself and get it to the point where you, where you, where you pay. But it's an easy checkout. Yes. Uh, um, but, you know, I would just encourage you and everyone on the Social Services Committee to go through the process as a client and to see what it takes to apply for food stamps, to apply for home aid, to apply for all the services that, you, that someone mm -hmm. might be entitled to, and see how either easy or difficult it is. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, what do you, legis you, know, you mm -hmm. don't know what you're legislating. I mean, that's one of the things that I would, instead of a tour, which is somewhat sanitized, you know, I would say that you should you know, that's my recommendation. No, I appreciate that. With, with, every, with anything, that. you know, with any department, you know. One, so. of the, one of the reasons I asked to be on the Social Services Committee is because all uh, senior citizens legislation yeah. and the Department of Aging legislation passes through there. Uh, what I never realized until I went door to door in a, in a smaller district was the amount of uh, homebound seniors that we have in Colony. Mm -hmm. People in their late 80s and their 90s trying to maintain their homes. Uh, folks who don't have any way to get to the grocery store to go shopping. People who need someone to put their garbage pail at the, uh, at the end of the, at the, end of the right. driveway mm -hmm. or have their, uh, their niece come up from Ravina once a mm -hmm. month, once a week to take them grocery shopping. And uh, there are a tremendous amount of seniors. Uh, I think my district is over 35% seniors. Really? You think so? And how old are you? Uh, 
I just turned 60. So, okay, well, uh, congratulations, yeah, Mazel but, Tov. That's good. Okay, yeah, but I'm, 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 I'm talking real seniors, uh, 80s, 90s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People, people who really need help, and uh, so I not fake seniors yeah, like Paul. Yeah, yeah that's like, right. I don't consider myself. <laughs> no, a senior. Fake senior too. <laughs> yeah, I'm 29 yeah. years old. There you go. Right. They well, started sending me the cards when I was 40. Yeah, I'm yeah. not quite sure about well, that. Well, we still say, may you live to be 120, and you're halfway there. So yeah, there you go. That's it. <laughs> uh, but. Uh, uh, there are all sorts of programs for uh, homebound seniors, yes. whether it's yeah. uh, meals programs or help winterizing their homes right. or uh, even there are programs where they will help seniors actually do small repairs around, around the house. Um, the whole idea, much like uh, uh, nursing homes have become, were, were uh, discouraged so that there was home health care was it's much easier to keep a senior in their home and in their comfortable surroundings as opposed sure. to congregate care or or whatever and you take those as last steps so one of my challenges is try to get the information on all the senior programs out to a very large community in my district. Okay, well good luck with that one uh, but um, the, the soldier on uh, program that's uh, over at the Anley Home that yep. the county executives. Are you a big fan of that? Or? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Talk, I talk mean, about I, that a little. Well, my my roots with the military is every time uh, I I speak to a military group, I've got a I've got a set of dog tags that were on mine, uh -huh. and they were issued to me over 50 years ago when I lived on Air Force bases uh, in Europe. My dad was a uh, uh, pilot in the Air Force. It I was just doing 20, the math, 60 20, and now 20, 50 years ago. Yeah. He, spent like, 27, he spent 27 years, joined the Army Air Force yeah. in 1939 and got out in 1964. But um, uh, I have come to really cherish the contribution of veterans. Uh, my, my military service was a military brat on Air Force bases. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but I have family Thanks, and my dad yeah. who uh, dedicated their, their entire lives to military service. So uh, I think whatever we have to do to help uh, our returning veterans or veterans who uh, need of assistance, yeah. uh, they've done some tremendous things over in Massachusetts with Soldier right, On, right, yeah. and I'm hoping that we can... Uh, so what's the timeline of when this is going to be uh, run up and running and open ribbon cutting blah, blah, blah. well I mean they're still at the stage where they have to negotiate uh, the specifics of the lease uh, the uh, uh, I was at the planning board meeting of the colony town board uh, town planning board when they gave them concept approval so now it's in the design phase I mean it's going to take a few years to uh, get it to the point where it's operational but it's uh, it's well on its way. Well, it, does it feel like it's taking forever and taking a really long time? Well, or is no one's sense of urgency greater than our own? Well, you know, uh, uh, there are all sorts of sensitivities in land use development, and then you have the sensitivities of um, developing the program properly for a constituency that you really want to provide a high level of service for. So. Uh, it's being done with, with private money for the most part. Uh, Soldier on, uh, while they may get some grants and stuff, the, uh, the lease from Albany County is, you know, uh, mm -hmm. our in-kind gift, if you will. But uh, um, they've got to put some pieces together in order to, uh, to get it up and do the construction, et cetera. And what's the, uh, what are, what's the price tag for this, do you think? Uh, because uh, it's private money, we don't really know. But. Well, I, you know, it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be su surprise me if it was in the $50 million range. Yeah, oh, a lot of money. yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's two, 200, uh, 200 well, uh, census. Yeah, g g give us the, uh, uh, the, 30, the 30 second Thumbnail. This is for homeless veterans. It's it's for for indigent. homeless homeless and indigent uh, and indigent veterans. It's for uh, um, sick veterans. And when I say sick, I don't necessarily mean uh, physically. You know, or physically, it, it, people who who need assistance. It's help with job training, life skills. Uh, 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 
help in terms of dealing with the challenges of everyday life. Um, Sheriff Apple has, uh, has really pitched in with the uh, uh, veteran community. He has, uh, uh, he's even taken uh, uh, folks from the, uh, from, the, from the jail and done job training and hooked them up with uh, uh, cor local corporations to get folks a skill. So I think we're hoping that there'll be some private cooperation as well to, uh, to get be veterans back into the productive workforce. Wow, that's terrific. So yeah, yeah keep up the good work. Paul, that, you know, you're doing great work and um, for all the people of Albany County and uh, be successful and do it with good health. Yes. Thank you Continued so much. Continued successful. All righty.